All right, so I'm actually writing my provisional patent application as we speak, and I caught myself getting writer's block and not knowing where to even really start. So a few different resources. So if we jump into the computer here, on UpCounsel, right, this is just a Google, I just Googled kind of how to write a provisional patent, and it gave me some decent guidance as to what I should be focusing on, um, as well as I actually purchased a uh, software program called Smart IP from our friends over at InventRight. Uh, if you haven't seen InventRight, feel free to check them out on YouTube. And this is basically a software that walks you through different prompts to help you explain your invention, explain what you've been working on, the problem that you're looking to solve, the solution, aka your invention, and then how exactly it solves the problem. When I was looking at this software, frankly, I just kept getting stuck. Like I would sit down and I don't want to go too far in depth into their software, just out of respect for them. But this question right here, how would you describe your invention if you only had one phrase? Um, th that's actually, excuse me, that's an easier one. But the second question is more a general question, right? An open-ended question where it does prompt you and it does help you give you some guidance on kind of how to write it and the different like parts of that, uh, parts of that answer that you should be hitting. But I just kept, I kept, you know, I'd grab a coffee in the morning, I'd sit down, I'd try and write it out, and I just couldn't properly, you know, formulate my thoughts into these answers. Um, so I was kind of stuck for a few days, and I stumbled upon this, and this is a slide deck from Cooper Union, and maybe it was like a guest speaker or a professor slide deck to the students or something. Uh, but I came across this slide, and it talks about the story of the invention, setting the stage, the unfulfilled need, the failures of others, what is in the prior art. And this just like opened everything up for me. So I sat down and just started to write. Okay, where did this problem that I'm solving with my newest and latest invention, where did it start, right? And I started to cite some different patents that are on the, that are, you know, patented um, back in the day, right? Like 1962. And I would talk about that and like what improvements this made. And then the latest one or one of the latest ones in 95. And then I would jump to 2006. So I would just go through this chronology of this problem that, I've, that I'm solving up to the, its current day. And then I would just point out in my writing, you know, that leads us to today where blah, 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 these current problems still exist and a solution is needed for them. And then boom, I just was so easily able to link my solution and how it addresses those points, all from the simple prompt of telling the story. Now, I need to go back and clean it up and make it kind of proper for a, um, you know, I wrote it in more of a copywriting and a, and a story, um, you know, book format, if you will. And I need to go back and clean it up. But another great resource I found I want to share with you guys, and I'll link, like I said, all these in the description below. Um, but I found this channel, work World Class Inventors, and I believe his name is Stephen Moore. And this is literally his provisional patent application for an improved tangle-free flag, which is kind of cool. Um, he feels comfortable releasing this because I'm pretty sure he's already uh, licensed his product or it's already you know out in the market somehow. But he goes through, I really want you guys to sit down and read this because he goes through his exact this is actually his first page, right? He talks about field of invention, background, and like I said, these are the formalities that I can add after. Now that I have the bulk of my writing done, thanks to that prompt, I can go back and I can fill all these out. So I wanted to share with you this video because he's super in depth as well. You know, I think his inventors were kind of meticulous folks. Um, and so it really pays to be thorough in your patent application. However, in my latest research, I'm not sure that it really gives you, it does you any favors in the long run by being super meticulous and super detailed about like your specific claims. I think in your pat, uh, provisional patent, you want to be a little bit more general. At least that's the guidance that I've kind of, you know, seen the last few months um, in my research, but that's something to explore as well for yourself. Uh, I think for mine, you know, I maybe, I kind of started to think about the claims of my invention eventually when I, you know, submit for the full utility patent. A provisional patent is a provisional utility patent. So I think I'm going to go a little bit more general and a, a, a little less specific just to keep my options open for, you know, 12 months down the line when I submit for my full utility patent. So that's just something to keep in mind. But without further ado, you know, go through this uh, video and it's, it's an awesome resource, guys. He shows you his drawings. He shows you what he included. He talks about, you know, do you need these renderings like he had done? Um, you know, right away in your provisional, you don't really need it. 
Uh, everything that I keep seeing is just keep your provisional simple. It can be hand drawings. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. The, the inventor in me and the you know paranoid person in me wants to put everything in there when I think that that hurts you in the long run because then you're kind of stuck and people could use that against you when you file for your full utility patent down the road. So I hope this helps cure your writer's block. I hope this gives you kind of a, a launch po uh, pad and a starting point for writing your provisional. Best of luck in the process and keep watching the videos for more on product licensing and how I'm taking my product to market. Thanks.